feeling stressed, overwhelmed, and underappreciated at work. And to make matters worse, your hair started falling out. You are probably suffering from burnout with associated telogen effluvium, which is a response to stress from your hair that makes it fall out. And this is probably more common than you realize because our physical, mental, and emotional health is all connected. And so how you are feeling at work, if you're feeling symptoms of burnout and in this constant fight or flight state, that is gonna be reflected in your other organs, including your skin and hair. I'm Dr. Mary Alice Mina. I'm a board certified dermatologist and welcome to my channel, The Skin Reel, where I give real people real information about their skin health so that they can make informed decisions. Sound good? Let's get into it. This is my weekly recap episode where I break down my key takeaways from my interview with Dr. Tamara Beckford, where we are discussing burnout. And she's a leader in burnout research and education and awareness, not just for the doctor community, but really for corporations at large. And I loved having this conversation with her. I learned a ton and I think you will too. If you want to hear the full episode, be sure to stay tuned to the end where I will link it. Now, Dr. Tamar Bedford, she is a physician. She's an emergency medicine doctor, but she has really taken an interest in burnout because since the COVID pandemic, especially with these emergency medicine doctors and just doctors in general, burnout has a huge problem in the physician community. But it's not just physicians who are suffering from burnout. Really, there's no sector out there that's immune to it, that burnout is just something that has seemed to take over. People in finance are suffering from burnout. Educators are suffering from burnout big time. But you could also be a stay-at-home mom or dad who is overwhelmed and feels underappreciated and dealing with burnout. So it can affect everyone, no matter what you do for work, no matter where you are, whether you're an entry-level position or a high-level executive. Burnout does not discriminate. And it can really affect everyone. And it's definitely an epidemic in our country and something we really need to be aware of or we're going to lose really smart, competent, hardworking individuals to burnout, which I hope we don't. So I love this episode with Dr. Beckford because, first of all, she has such a positive attitude and she has so many pearls on, on burnout and ways to combat it. The first thing is, what is burnout? So Dr. Beckford breaks down burnout. She says it's brought to you by the letter D, that you first have detachment, then you have depersonalization, and then you have depletion. And these are feelings, they're not fleeting. It's not like you get it one day and then you feel better the next. These are feelings that stick with you. And it may start at work and it may stay there for a while, but with enough time, it tends to bleed over into other aspects of your life, maybe your personal life, your home life, your family life. And that's where it can become a really big problem. It, at best, it can make going to your job or your career unbearable, but at worst, it can really make you feel like life is not even worth living at all. And that is a very, very serious problem. Burnout may start out by feeling overwhelmed, underappreciated at work, but it also can have physical manifestations and it can affect all parts of your body. Because again, remember your body, all these organ systems, they're all connected and they work in unison. So having this high level of stress, these feelings of anxiety, depression, desperation, depletion, this is going to affect you physically. You may get sick more often. You may have chronic headaches, chronic back pain or pains that you never had before. Your hair may fall out if you're developing something called telogen effluvium from all the stress. You may notice that your skin is breaking out more because the high levels of stress causing more androgen, causing more acne. You also are most likely not sleeping well, and that's going to affect all parts of your body, including your skin. And you may not be eating as well because we know when you're stressed, when you're feeling tired or depressed, you are not always going to make the best eating choices or focusing on exercise as well. So all of these things work together to affect your overall health, not just your mental health, but your physical health, including your skin health. 
it's really hard to have beautiful, glowing, gorgeous skin when you are feeling these symptoms of burnout. So Dr. Beckford gives some really good takeaways on what to do if you're feeling like you're dealing with burnout. And I think sometimes people feel like, well, there's nothing I can do because it's my job and I can't do anything about my job. And that's true. You may not actually have control over your job, but as I tell my children, you have control over yourself. You have control over how you respond and how you react. And so that's what you got to focus on first and foremost. So if you're feeling these symptoms, Dr. Beckford recommends to first and foremost, pause, acknowledge how you're feeling validate it and allow yourself to breathe and to feel those feelings. Number two is to make a plan. And this plan has to involve self-care as number one and in putting your mental health and physical health first and foremost. She recommends finding an activity that you love and making it a non-negotiable. Maybe it's going outside every day for a 30-minute walk. Maybe it's taking a yoga class. Maybe it's doing a hobby that you love, but something that brings you joy. And if it can be something that involves movement, even better, and really commit to it. Make it a non-negotiable. You may also want to reach out for professional help from a doctor or a therapist who can also help you. Another helpful thing to do is to set boundaries on your time. And this is important whether you're struggling with burnout or not, because if you're not struggling with burnout right now, if you don't manage your time, you will at some point, I promise. So make sure that you are setting boundaries on your time and your attention because no one else will. In this day and age where we're always connected and everyone can reach you at any time, it's hard to say no and to stop, but you set boundaries on your time when you're gonna turn your computer off or stop checking your emails for the evening and call it quits or over the weekend, prioritize not looking at your phone, checking work emails over the weekend, whatever it is you need to do. A key thing I would recommend is not starting your day looking at your emails or social media feed. That is just not a productive way to start your day. Instead, do something that's meaningful and productive for you. Now, if you're an employer or a manager, what are some ways that you can help your team members who might be struggling with burnout? Well, I think a key thing is to have a personal connection with your employees. Maybe you send them a personal thank you or a personal email when something went well or they went above and beyond to let them know you saw what they did and you appreciate that. Maybe a little coffee together or they can leave early one day, whatever it is that your program or your office can allow, but something personal to let them know you saw what they did and you appreciate them and you value them. And that can go a long way. Allow your team to be off in the evenings and over the weekends. Don't expect them to be on call 24-7, especially if this is not life or death things that we're dealing with. And in corporate America, that's usually not the way it is, right? Allow them to not have to answer emails or messages over the weekends. Don't bother them. Let them have that protected time with their family and loved ones. This is so important in this day and age, right, where we're so connected and we want an answer immediately and right away, but it's important to let people have space to decompress and be away from work. Constantly being in this elevated fight or flight state when you are burned out, when you are stressed, is not healthy for your body, is not healthy for your mental health, and is not healthy for your skin. I can do a lot to help your skin look great and amazing, but if you are stressed, if you are burnout, all the Botox and fillers and lasers and peels in the world are not going to really address the root cause. And that's why I say skincare is whole body care. You've got to take care of your body first and foremost from the inside out. And if you are feeling burnout and stressed out, you're not alone. You are not going crazy seek help, find something that's meaningful for you, set boundaries on your time and protect it fiercely. I highly, highly, highly recommend checking out my episode with Dr. Beckford. You can click on it here. She has many, many more great pearls on how to deal with burnout and what employers can do to help prevent burnout in their employees. So you definitely want to check it out here and I will see you next week.